Hey guys, I just wanted to record a short video that walks you through questions one through four off the penny isotope post lab analysis questions. Uh, given that there was a little bit of difficulty with these, a uh, number of questions arise, I thought it'd be good just to go through a model example. So, uh, question number one, it says, using the average atomic mass for both pre and post 82 pennies, established using the class data, okay, so this is the class data that I provided to you guys here, okay, as far as the pre and post goes, develop an algebraic solution to solve for the number of pre and post pennies in your film container, okay? So, as far as those... Um, kind of algebraic expression goes, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Now, this is not the data you guys were working with in class today, but imagine that this film caster here, okay, had a mass of 8.93 grams, right? And then I stuck 10 pennies inside of it, and I found the mass of that, and that was at 38.27. By simple subtraction, right, the difference between here tells me that the 10 pennies that I've added inside have a mass of 29.34. Okay, so again, mass of container, mass of container plus pennies, the difference is merely those 10 pennies. So as far as your algebraic expression goes, the first is understanding that if we've already defined x as the number of pre-pennies and y as the number of post-pennies, well, knowing that there are 10 inside, x plus y yields 10. The second equation is talking about the overall mass of those pennies inside, where we know that however many pre-pennies pre -pennies there are, multiplied by its mass, plus the number of post pennies there are multiplied by its mass, the sum of those is going to give us the sum of the mass of the pennies inside, the 29.34. So this is, you know, kind of those two algebraic expressions we need to come up with. Question number two is asking us, you know, now that we have these algebraic expressions in hand, we should actually be solving for x and y. And so to do that, I first um, rearrange to solve for x, I perform a substitution step where I take the 10 minus y and I plug that in for x. From there, working through a series of steps, I isolate and I solve for y, okay? Now, once I have y in hand, recall that I have this equation here, you know, x equals 10 minus y. So I subtract that y value from 10 and I get my x value. So these are the two kind of values I have in hand. And this should be a little peculiar, right? We have two different decimals and Again, whether you're period one, two, seven, eight, or nine, there's a good chance you're gonna come up with decimals. The data's not perfect, okay? So what I would do is I would round to the nearest whole number, okay? So that pre, again, which we've defined as X, is seven, and the post, which we've defined as Y, is three. Now again, just coming up with the raw quantities is your answer for question number two. Question number three, I think, is really straightforward. I think maybe just the language is a little tricky. It says, what value for both the pre and post pennies used in class would be analogous to the mass number with an atom? Well, here's our two pennies, right? We have our pre, we have our post. They're both pennies, right? So we're talking about the exact same element, therefore the same like fake PE atomic symbol. What differs is their mass number. Okay, so this is maybe how you'd represent that. But again, that's just the mass of your average pre-penny versus the mass of your average post-penny. Okay, so those are the values that are analogous to mass numbers should we have been talking about atoms, right? So like a carbon 12, a carbon 13, a carbon 14, those are all mass numbers, all carbon. These are mass numbers, both pennies. Okay, for number four, given what we had already solved for in question number one, we identified that of the 10 pennies inside of our film canister, seven were pre, three were post. This translates to 70% being pre or 0.7 as a decimal, 30% post or 0.3 in its decimal form. So now this essentially becomes plug and chug, right? We are being asked to solve for the overall atomic mass, right? For a penny, right? What is like that weighted average taking into account the relative abundances of these, okay? So again, using my specific data for the sake of this example, I, um, I take that mass of the pre multiplied by 0.7, mass of the post multiplied by 0.3, and I arrive at the atomic mass, okay? So again, this is like your like representative mass for pennies, not considering pre or post, just pennies. Just like how maybe like 12.01 you know, uh, would maybe be your representative mass, your atomic mass for carbon. Awesome. Thanks, guys.